A single bead can destroy half a city. What kind of bead is so powerful? The cholinesterase inhibitor stops the brain from sending nerve messages down the spinal cord within 30 seconds. General Francis of the U.S. Marine Corps is considered one of America's greatest generals. He and his comrades fought to the death to protect their country, and yet their families get no compensation. It's as if their sacrifices were nothing, nothing more than ants. In the end, General Francis and his men rebelled. They secretly transported the U.S. Army's newest biological weapon to Alcatraz Island and took him one tourist who were visiting the island hostage. He threatened the U.S. government to pay a ransom of $100 million within 48 hours or he would kill the hostages and launch a gas attack on San Francisco. Alcatraz was once the most heavily guarded prison in the United States. No one in recorded history has ever escaped from this island in the ocean. In fact, one man who did manage to escape was former British agent Mason, who was imprisoned there. FBI Director Womack saw Mason as the only hope for a rescue operation. He tried to convince Mason to help in exchange for his freedom. But when Mason agreed, he immediately ripped up the court order for a pardon. He had no intention of letting Mason live. Joining him in the operation is bioweapons scientist Sammy. He'll help Mason and the counterterrorism unit neutralize the bioweapon threat. After all, it only takes one of those weapons to destroy half a city, and General Francis stole 15 of them, enough to destroy San Francisco. Satellite heat maps show the weapon is in the morgue. If the threat was neutralized, a green smoke signal would be sent. Otherwise, plan B would be to sacrifice 81 hostages and bomb Alcatraz. At night, when everything is ready, the team takes a plane to the beach. They'll dive into Alcatraz Reservoir through the water. This was Mason's escape route. When they made it into the reservoir, they didn't find an exit. Mason said that this fireplace that keeps spewing fire is the way out. If you get caught in that fire, you're gonna get burned. The special forces didn't even dare to try to go in. Mason didn't hesitate to roll into the fire. Then Mason went in and opened the door. Then they went through the drain pipe into the underground tunnel and up to the shower room. When they got to the shower room, they looked at the ground with a fiber optic camera and found a motion sensor there. Their position was compromised. General Francis immediately brought his men outside the shower room and surrounded it. They had the advantage of being up high, but the special forces aren't cowards. They'd rather die than surrender. General Francis is doing this for money, not to hurt anyone, but the confrontation was tense. One of the special forces soldiers couldn't control himself and opened fire. With a single shot, everyone opened fire. In the end, the anti-terrorist forces were all killed. Mason and Stanley, who stayed in the tunnel, escaped. Since the operation failed, Mason just wanted to go home to see his daughter, whom he hadn't seen for years. But Stanley is an FBI agent with orders. He's been trying to convince Mason to help him. On the other hand, the Marines were looking through the bodies of the anti-terrorist unit when they realized that one of the bodies was missing a walkie-talkie and assumed that someone had taken it. They immediately went down the underground tunnels to look for them. When they found Mason and Stanley, they immediately threw bombs into the tunnels and turned on the tunnel's flamethrowers. No one usually survives a situation like this, so they didn't go down the tunnel to check on them, so they naturally assumed they were dead. How could Mason have died so easily? They are at a point of no return. Mason promised Stanley he'd keep moving. They soon arrived at the morgue, but there were only 12 bioweapons, and three more were missing. Stanley dismantled the weapon's navigational chips, rendering them inoperable. Just then, the Marines realized what was going on in the morgue and came after them. The two men immediately fled to the underground tunnels. General Francis couldn't catch them, so he threatened them with hostages for the chip. Mason knew that handing over the chip would mean handing over his life. He destroyed all the chips and told Stanley to find the other three weapons while they went to rescue the hostages. During his negotiation with the general, Stanley managed to disarm one of the weapons, but was discovered they both ended up in prison. But if Mason could get out of prison before, he could do it now. He tied a strip of rags into a rope and threw it over the prison door's open button. With no one to guard them, the two of them escaped without a hitch. The time limit had expired, but there was no response from the government. The soldiers were sure that the government would not pay, so they forced General Francis to order the launch of the bioweapons. But Francis really didn't want to hurt anyone. At the last minute, he secretly altered the target location of the gas, so that the weapons, which were meant for the center of the city, were thrown into the middle of the sea, but this was confronted by the other soldiers. They rebelled, they had to get the money from the government anyway. During the infighting, General Francis was shot and killed. While dying, he told Stanley the location of the last of the weapons. Stanley then rushed to the lighthouse under Mason's cover to dismantle the weapon. On the other hand, the launching of the weapon has infuriated the government. They'd rather sacrifice the 81 hostages than give in to the terrorists. So they went to plan B. They send in a fleet of bombers for an airstrike. 
Stanley's dismantling of the bioweapon was interfered with, causing a green bee to roll into the ground. Once the bee breaks, it will be filled with poisonous gas from aisles and people will die within seconds, so he jumped forward and grabbed it in time. A soldier came after him, Stanley put the green beads into his mouth and stopped him from breathing. A mason was able to take down the last of the rebels, but the bomber had 17 seconds to reach Alcatraz. Stanley tried his best to light the green smoke signal. The monitor saw the signal and reported it to headquarters, but by the time the pilot received the order, it was too late. A missile had already landed on the island. Stanley was blown overboard by the heat wave. Luckily, Mason came to his aid in time. In the end, Stanley reported Mason dead to his superiors. He knew Mason was just a good father who wanted to visit his daughter. Mason's half-life in prison was an injustice to him. He wanted to use this opportunity to free Mason and let him be a normal human being. You can subscribe to Chili Film and leave comments if you have any ideas. See you next time.